Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you the capabilities of this machine and what I like about it. So if you're in the market for a welder you can order it on my website. And this is the exact same price as everywhere else. Thanks for watching. I reviewed this exact welder in 2018, so like five and a half years ago. And I ran it pretty hard for a while and then gave it to my father to use as like a hobby welder for making like tractor repairs and just a bunch of hobby stuff. And we've both been happy with the performance of it, especially for the price. So I decided to email Prime Weld and see if they were interested in sending me a brand new one. And then I could make them an unboxing video and sell it on my website. money back guarantee if anything's wrong with it when you get it and it also has a three year warranty. Box number one has the torch in it and an off on trigger switch for the torch handle which I never use, I use a TIG button. And then 220 plug adapter so you can put it in a 110 outlet and you can't, you can only weld like half amps on the smaller setting but this is really convenient if you're doing mobile stuff and this is all the only access you have. And then your torch parts. Looks like a stick of blue, lanthanated tungsten. And then you get a stubby back cap with it, which I really like. I never ever use these long ones because it's harder to get into tight places, you know, if you're welding up in a pipe or something. So I'll just be using that one. And I'll go through in detail on the website for you guys exactly how I set this up and all the welder settings I use for everything I'm doing in this video. Box number two. I've got a handheld welding shade, which I never use because you for TIG welding you really do need two free hands. But you can use this if you were to stick welding, which this machine also does, but I won't be using it. Gas hose. Stick welding stinger, ground clamp, foot pedal so you can vary your heat, your amperage, and then, whoops, let's see what's inside this box. Gas flow regulator, and I like these style where you can, you got the bubble that shows you exactly how much. CFH, cubic feet per hour that you're flowing. Attach the gas flow regulator to your argon gas bottle and then put the hose with the little adapter on to your outlet and then put this into the back of the machine. Snug it down making sure you use two wrenches and hold one on the machine so you're not twisting that fitting. Slowly turn the valve open on the bottle. If you go too fast you'll slam this ball up to the top I've done it probably a million times and it hasn't really caused any issues, but the right way to do it is do it slow. And then make sure your bottle's chained to a wall. I've got it out against my wall just showing you how to set up this welder, but it's dangerous. You know, if you knock this over and it breaks, it can become a missile. And then check for leaks. If you have a bad leak, it's easy to notice because the needle will drop. See, I can see that needle slowly dropping. So check for leaks. Here, we'll open the bottle back up. You just use some soapy, any soapy kind of cleaner you have, like dish soap, or I'm using Simple Green. You spray it, and see all those big bubbles, so you know there's a leak there. So you know you gotta tighten that down tighter. And then always try to get in the habit of shutting your valve off when you're done welding anyways, so you don't waste argon when you're done welding for the day. And then hook your torch, foot pedal, and ground clamp up as they show you in the manual on page 21 and clamp your ground clamp to the work table. Ground clamp goes on this side, positive side. Twist that till it's nice and snug. Thread in your foot pedal controller. It's got a little notch on the bottom. That's the line up. Push that in snug. Then hook up your torch lead. Same thing, push that in, give it 
a little over almost a half turn, I guess. Hook that the gas line into here. Now get up. Plug the machine in and flip the on switch in the back. This machine has pretty strong cooling fans which move a lot of air, and that's a good thing, but you don't you want to make sure that you don't put it near your where you're welding because all that air moving out is going to displace your shielding gas and give you welding problems. So make sure this isn't pointed exactly at where you're welding or come out a ways and put some way to divert it. And I would have thought that would have been enough to divert the air back there, but watch, I weld right here on this plate. And even right here, it's still blowing the flame quite a bit. See that flame? So you gotta do a better job than that. There, that's good. Okay, first weld, we'll see how it goes. Nice. Wow, well. Okay, let me get you an arc shot on how smooth this puddle is. shaky because I'm welding right behind a camera but you see how stable that puddle was the fluorescent lights in this shop and the arc frequency and everything gives a little bit of flutter in the camera but hopefully you can see how smooth that arc is I'm really happy the puddle I'm really happy with it nice and shiny okay this is quarter inch thick aluminum
lot of practice on welding thin stuff, but this welder welds it pretty dang good. I just put it at 24 amps and pinned the foot pedal, then just made sure I was adding enough rods so it didn't melt through. And the tungsten's holding its shape good. I'm not having to reshape it. That's not too bad doing it freehand without a weld positioner. I dorked it once and stuffed the tungsten, but I'm out of practice. That's stainless steel. Welds that great too. Then to try to keep it cool where I was just laying the rod in there and I had the pulser turned on on the machine so you're just doing spots, not running a hot puddle the whole time to get that nice pretty gold color. Okay, I think it's a pretty good machine for the money, a really good machine for the money. Like I said at the first of the video, this one's been around for five and a half years and it's still working great. Another cool thing about it is it's lightweight enough you can just pick it up by the handle and carry it wherever you want if you need to do some stick welding somewhere. You don't want to drag a welding bottle around. Okay, thanks again for watching. Like I said, if you want to order this welder, you can go to my website 6061.com and then just scroll down and it's here on the left. And all the specifications are at the bottom. And then you can order it with a PayPal account, Venmo, or credit card. And it'll ship directly from the manufacturer, the same as theirs does. And then if you have any questions on any of my welder settings, or what type of filler rod I use, what tungsten I use, all my machinery, it's a very thorough website. That's a $95 subscription, one-time payment that'll answer all your questions. And then if anything isn't answered on the website, feel free to email me. Got a bunch of videos here that aren't listed on YouTube. And then the TIG button that I sell, the variable amperage controller that I like using for probably 95% of my projects. See you in the next video. If you got any questions or comments or ideas, leave them below in the comments.